Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Rabbi Isaac Luria, born in 1534 and died in 1572. One of the results of the expulsion from Spain and the cataclysmic disaster which that spelt for Sephardi Jews was a turn to mysticism, that there must be a higher and uh, more uh, esoteric purpose to the suffering of the Jews. And this had an effect all over the world, including in the land of Israel. And it was there in Jerusalem in 1534 that Isaac Luria was born. He became the greatest mystic of Jewish history, who really transformed the way that the Kabbalah, and in particular the Zohar, the major text of Jewish mysticism, is studied. There have been previous important scholars of the Zohar and the Kabbalah, including Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, who was a teacher of Isaac Luria. But Rabbi Luria's scheme completely overturned previous interpretations and is still the dominant way in which the Kabbalah and the Zohar are understood by Jewish mystics. It's known as Lurianic Kabbalah after Rabbi Isaac Luria after his surname. He settled in Svat, in the north of Israel. This is the same town where, for example, Rabbi Yosef Karo was working and was part of that very important uh, mystical community uh, which was involved uh, both in Jewish law and in more esoteric aspects of the Jewish tradition. He spent seven years essentially on his own, uh, learning and delving and contemplating and meditating upon the Kabbalah and upon the Zohar, and then he started to train up disciples. He died very young, age only 38, in 1572, as often seems to be the case with the mystical figures, but his uh, writings and his teachings were uh, produced and uh, carried on by his students, including Rabbi Chaim Vital, who becomes his most important interpreter and uh, the most important uh, continuer of Rabbi Isaac Luria's works. He's known as the Ari, as the uh, Lion, because of his enormous dominance in the area of mysticism, and is often called the Arizal, Zal sons of Zichrona Levracha, uh, may his memory be a blessing. It's impossible in any mystical discussion within a traditional Jewish context nowadays not to refer to the Arizal, not to refer to his uh, contribution, and every movement since, from uh, Hasidut uh, to uh, Sabbatianism, which we'll discuss in a few weeks' time, each one of these uh, mystical movements owes an enormous debt to the Arizal and his analysis of uh, the uh, Kabbalah, which uh, systematized it, which made it uh, comprehensible, which imposed some order upon what could be a very disparate and uh, difficult to grasp a tradition. Uh, in that way, he's in uh, many ways in the trained tradition as the Shulchan Aruch, as Rav Yosef Karo. Just as Rav Yosef Karo imposed order on a very diffuse legal tradition, the Arizal imposed the same order on a very difficult and uh, a very uh, dispersed mystical tradition and uh, made it accessible as it still is today in Jewish mystical circles. Thanks for joining.